Well, Simon, uh, thank you very much, uh, and ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to begin by echoing the Prime Minister's thanks to the organisers of today. Summit Sran O'Sullivan, thanks for your tireless uh, work. And Simon Bridges uh, and the uh, um, Auckland Business Chamber. Simon, thanks for your work, your friendship, and uh, you know the things you've been doing uh, for business in Auckland, but all of New Zealand. Uh, can I recognise now formally the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs, Winston Peters, and to say what a privilege and a pleasure it is uh, to be in government with, with Winston and New Zealand First and David Seymour in the ACT Party. Different than you heard on TV news, it was a very short period of time we took between the end of the counting and announcement of the special votes and the formation of a government and that time was used extremely well away from Wellington to go through every part of uh, uh, each of the parties uh, c uh, campaign uh, commitments and um, policies uh, to work through them in detail and, and achieve something that in the history of MMP in New Zealand has not been done before, a coalition government with three parties in it, where very much the work plan for the next three years has not only been ironed out and committed to by all three parties, but actually effort and uh, uh, work has been put in to form a strong relationship, particularly, particularly between the three leaders, that leads to a strong and stable government that New Zealanders can rely upon for the next three years uh, and uh, beyond. I want to also acknowledge the many leaders, uh, exporters uh, and uh, sector representative diplomats and other leaders who have joined us here in the room today. In particular, I'd like to uh, thank Ambassador Udal for his remarks to us uh, earlier. Uh, the great skill with which he uh, didn't cause the diplomatic incident that Simon's questions were hoping for, I think, is um, recognition, sir, of your uh, skill. Uh, but I look forward to talking to you a little bit later in the day. And thanks for the commitment and friendship you've shown to the relationship between uh, New Zealand uh, and the US. Uh, I'd also like to recognise High Commissioner from Australia, High Commissioner Sudal, thank you for uh, being here today and uh, the great work that you do in, in that strong relationship. New Zealand is and always has been a trading nation. We have, a long, we have long championed the importance of global connections and maintaining international flows of goods, people, capital and ideas. Ladies and gentlemen, we are at our best when we are outward looking and backing ourselves to compete on the world stage. Part of our government's message to businesses and to indeed all New Zealanders is that our number one focus is growing New Zealand's economy and easing the cost of living so New Zealanders can get ahead. Strengthening our connections with the rest of the world is one of the six drivers we've identified to do just that. And significantly, trade supports one in four jobs in New Zealand, and with those in exporting jobs earning 7% more on average than in any other sector in New Zealand. Exporting firms have higher productivity, 25% higher, and grow faster than non-exporting firms. The simple fact is that, more, that, that the more we sell to each other internationally, the better off we will all be, and the more we, we can provide uh, for a higher quality of life and living for New Zealanders. But our global economic landscape continues to evolve. As the Prime Minister said earlier this morning, geopolitical tensions are having a ripple effect across trade policy internationally. And we are increasingly seeing countries around the world looking inwards and move towards protectionism and appeasement of domestic stakeholders. So one point I would like to make on, uh, you know, one point I would make on taking the port trade portfolio for a second time is that the operating environment uh, in the world today is quite different than when I last encountered it six years ago. Some things, however, remain the same. Trade remains an essential engine for growth. Trade continues to expand New Zealand's economic opportunities, lifting incomes and strengthening our ability to respond to shocks. We therefore have a strong and clear message for our partners. As the Prime Minister said, New Zealand is open for business. We will engage with you. We will be active offshore to work for New Zealand businesses and to drive investment in both directions. Facilitating market access has long been a priority and we have some serious unfinished business there. 
and we flagged this uh, during the campaign. But government's role today is much broader than just market access. It's about shaping the brand and telling the story that sits behind it. Opening doors, helping to make connections, and supporting New Zealanders to do well on the world stage. And of course, building trade, ar trade architecture that serves the needs of exporters and, and, import and investors remains important. And this is why, as part of the government's trade strategy, we're going to focus on driving value, not just volume, of New Zealand's exports upwards with a target of doubling the value of our exports uh, uh, over 10 years. We will uh, seek to expand our access to foreign markets, including by maximising the value of our existing trade, free trade agreement architecture. And we'll focus relentlessly on resolving the barriers to trade that restrict access to overseas markets. And we'll continue to champion the importance of a level playing field and predictable rules, while working to ensure that these rules adapt and respond to the issues of the day. So what can you expect from this government with respect to New Zealand's trade and investment links with the US? The United States is one of our most important trade and economic partners. Our trade relationship has transformed over time to become a high value and high innovative partnership. Despite the absence of a free trade agreement, today the US is our third largest trading partner with two-way trade worth 27, almost $28 billion to the end of June 2023. Our trade relationship with the US is broad and it's sophisticated uh, with about half in goods and, and half in services from our traditional primary exports through to advanced manufacturing, technology, lifestyle goods and digital services. And in fact, our trade with the US is more diverse than our trade with the UK or with China. And I'm delighted that we will hear later this afternoon from John Bellingall, uh, who will present a report on the New Zealand-US trade and investment relationship. This report demonstrates that the NZ-US economic relationship has not just bounced back from the challenges presented by COVID-19, but continues to go from strength to strength. New Zealand goods exports to the US have grown 57% since their pandemic-related low in 2021, and now sit at 36% above pre-pandemic levels. And in a demonstration of just how New Zealand's export profile to the US continues to evolve, the value of the apple harvesting equipment we sell to the US is now greater than that of the value of the apples we export to the US. Above all, uh, the report makes it clear that economic engagement with the US is to our mutual benefit. One of the defining strengths of the US-New Zealand relationship is what we have in common. A common language, common values, a common can-do attitude, and a shared energy for seizing opportunity. These commonalities are at the heart of our trading relationship, which is founded in people-to-people -people connections. Continuing to build these connections will be vital to unlocking future growth. We have signalled that we will undertake a record number of trade missions in this government's first term, more than any government has in the history of, a New, of New Zealand. And this includes the United States. And I look forward to a delegation and our first visit to the US next year, which I hope will involve many of you in this room, strengthening vital connections between Kiwi and US businesses and doing what you do best, which is uh, sell to each other. We will get out and hustle, uh, and a lot of the action these days, regardless of whether we have an FDA in place, is in non-tariff barriers, NTBs. And I'll be seeking urgent advice from my officials as to how and what else we can do to supercharge the support to businesses. We're determined to break down barriers uh, that are such a drag on productivity and growth, and tackling NTBs is a complex business. It takes persistence, but we will be there for you. And I put it as simply as this, uh, New Zealand meets its trade obligations and we take them seriously and we expect others around the world to show us the same courtesy. The value of our relationship with the US uh, goes from far beyond 
trade statistics. In an increasingly complex and contested world, it's essential New Zealand works with friends and partners to support our exporters, strengthen our supply chains, and position ourselves to not just endure the headwinds we're facing, but to grow despite of them. Critical to uh, uh, this effort is the pursuit of new opportunities to work together to drive growth here at home and in our region. Ladies and gentlemen, from New Zealand's perspective, in the long term, we see it's the CPTPP as the best option for the US to embed itself in the India-Pacific economic architecture. In fact, back in early 2016, one of my first responsibilities as a new trade uh, Minister of Trade was hosting a 12-country ministerial meeting followed by a ceremony in Auckland for the signing of the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement. We will all be aware, of course, that the US ultimately decided not to join the agreement, and it remains my hope uh, to someday be able to welcome them back. The Asia-Pacific region uh, fundamentally needs a framework based upon uh, international rules that can be relied upon, and the US has an extremely important role to play in this. In the meantime, we're focused on other ways in which the US can actively engage in the economic architecture of the Indo-Pacific. We have welcomed the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework, IPEF, in that context. And whilst IPEF is a bit of a tongue twister, and I'm yet to receive a full briefing from officials on it, uh, in terms of my initial thoughts, on the numbers alone, it's huge. 14 countries, six G20 economies, including the US and India, 50% of New Zealand's exports, 40% of global GDP. And to state the obvious, when the US is running with a regional economic initiative of this scale, one that includes rulemaking, you can't afford not to be at the table. I know there's been a, a, some a negative comment about the lack of market access track and the failure to land a deal in this trade pillar in San Francisco, but I'm more inclined to say let's give it time. The negotiations haven't even been going a year, but it remains an important priority. And my strong view is that anything that might uh, produce the building blocks for a future a full feature regional free trade agreement in the years ahead is something that we must take seriously. There's still water to flow under the bridge here. We will go through the fine print when we get the advice from our negotiators, but from what I've seen so far, it looks like something we would want to be part of and will take seriously. Ladies and gentlemen, conclude here. This leads me back to where I began. New Zealand is at its best when we are looking outward, engaging in the world and showcasing what we have to offer. We benefit from and indeed depend on the dynam dynam dynamism of our economic partners, both in our region and further afield. New Zealand's path forward lies in maintaining this open and outward facing stance, actively engaging with the international community. And it's imperative we continue to collaborate on a global scale to establish optimal uh, trading conditions with the flexibility to adapt to whatever global challenges exist at a particular point in time. And we look forward to working with our partners and friends in the US to do this. I look forward from here to hearing from all of the speakers today about, uh, the, uh, about the returns they are getting from the US market and how to maximize the value of this most important relationship while working together to navigate the shifting tides of trade globally. Thank you. Well, yeah. Hey, thanks so much, uh, Minister McClay, for those remarks, and thank you for you know sticking around. That, that engagement, I'm sure, is incredibly valuable. I, I suppose the first question, it's a big one, but how does uh, how, how how do you in the trade portfolio in a National Act New Zealand First government differ from you know Damien O'Connor uh, and and Labour in the portfolio? 
Well, um, look, I, I think it's important to recognise that over the last six years we're in opposition, a consensus has been built upon the importance of trade. I mentioned earlier when I came uh, here to Auckland, to Sky City, uh, to uh, sign a free trade agreement, one of the most important that offers the most of any agreement New Zealand has signed, given the size uh, and, and, and wealth of those economies at the time, uh, that there were parties in our parliament that actively campaigned against that agreement. And we've worked very, very hard to make a, a trade as bipartisan as we can. I think the test of that will be over the coming years as we push the boat out as a new government to look for new opportunities and seize them wherever they can. And I hope that that, um, you know, that way we've been able to work together across Parliament remains because it's fundamentally important for New Zealand. But trade is in the nature of national New Zealand first in action and in, in act. It's in our DNA. And so you're going to see a relentless focus on supporting new businesses, finding opportunities, and pursuing those opportunities internationally. So it's, you know, it's sometimes said that governments think their job is to go out and, and sell things on the world stage. It's not, because if we were good at that, that would be our job. We wouldn't be in Parliament. It's to create a, a framework to give certainty, to open the doors, to go through them and assist businesses, but then sometimes move out of the way and let them get on with it. And so, Simon, when we made the commitment to doing more um, trade missions uh, than any government has in the history of New Zealand over the next three years is to get New Zealanders in front of their counterparts. We know Kiwi business can do well. Our job is to open the door. The final thing is, and, and um, uh, you know, it will become clear in the coming period of time, in announcing our, our trade policy national just before the election, uh, I had to think very deeply about it. I've done a few of these now, and the fundamentals of trade of what we need for New Zealand remain the same. Uh, and whilst, uh, you know, repeat, repeat, a repeat is important, uh, you don't get to do that when you're coming to a new election asking people to support you. But actually what I said was we should judge the success of our trade strategy as much on the amount we increase what we export by value the number of deals that we sign. And so setting that extremely ambitious target of, drubbly, of doubling our trade exports by value within 10 years means we're going to have to work with all of you in the business community to achieve that because it's the only way we grow the economy. It's the only way that we maximise the potential of those trade deals and it's the only way that we repay the significant amount of debt that's been run up that sits on the books for Kiwis to um, you know, have to front up with, uh, from the back pocket. Yeah, and that ambition is fantastic. I mean, you, you alluded to, to it in your remarks, but, you know, climate change is real and, and there's been a huge change in the weather on trade. Um, I, I recall when we were in government, the issue was CPTPP, or back then TPP as it should be, protesters. Uh, now it's governments uh, that we have to worry about. And, of course, uh, we're in a situation where, um, as Vitaly Vangelis, your senior most senior trade official says it's the end of the golden weather. The question on that is, you know, with that change of circumstances, presumably you can't just rinse and repeat. We've got to change tech and how we do things. I mean, some things stay the same. Talk to us about what, but how do you see it being a bit different this time in your uh, second time in the chair? Well, the world's certainly a different place. On uh, Monday, uh, we were sworn in, what's today? Thursday. Uh, Monday we were sworn in, uh, Tuesday briefings with meetings. We know you're first, a real trade minister when it's like, is this Bogota, <laughs> or, Bo Bogota Auckland, <laughs> Brazil, where am I? That's yeah. right. uh, uh, Tuesday, first cabinet meeting, uh, 12.30 uh, Wednesday morning, 12.30 at night, I uh, jumped in a car, was down at the MFAT offices where there was a, a Zoom meeting, a, a ministerial WTO meeting um, of country, select group of countries to talk about MC13 next year, which is in Dubai. And so my observation was, number one, having not been to a WTO ministerial meeting for six years, some things don't change at all. Uh, the people may be different, the conversation, the challenges were the same. The very next morning, and then it was an hour sleep before that, an hour sleep afterwards, got on a plane to come to Auckland and went and spoke to a breakfast about to the Indian community. And I said thing to them, other things do. Six years ago, a trade minister would travel the world and come back with jet lag. I've got jet lag and I've just been in the MFAT offices overnight, right? So the point of this is, um, um, there's an old saying, you know, in times like these, we've got to remember there have always been times like these. We shouldn't talk ourselves into being pessimistic. The world is a challenging place. It's a very hard place to do business. 
it has always been a hard place for New Zealand to do business. I look at Miles here, you know, his company on behalf of his farmers is the best at the world in what they do because New Zealand farmers are the best in the world at what they do. But as a result of that, it is always hard to get access for Kiwis around the world and for us to live in the playing field. And so, Ambassador, you are right. Our job is to compete, talking to continue to talk about the benefits of trade and levelling the playing field, how that when you get a rules-based system, system in a region or internationally, it is good for everybody when that is a respectful relationship. And so, Simon, it is much more challenging now than it has ever been, but we have some of the best producers, we have the best exporters, and we have um, the best uh, uh, trade negotiators and now we have the best Prime Minister, the best Deputy Prime Minister, and soon to be the next Deputy Prime Minister to do the job. Um, look, I mean, on that note, in terms of free trade agreements, or just trade agreements even, um, it, you've been you know, clear about uh, India. Um, where are the other gaps that we still have in our uh, 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 portfolio of uh, agreements? Well, um, there's a growing architecture. We have 15 uh, FTAs, original deals now, which is quite comprehensive. So in some cases, it's about finding how we can improve upon those. But the first thing we're going to do is look at how we can sell more. I've got to say, the time of um, more inward-looking study and coming up with strategies and talking to people, whilst it remains important, has been done over the last decade, is we now, as a government, need to do what New Zealand business is doing, rolls our, roll our sleeves up and sell a bit more. And so ultimately, um, you know, the first thing we're going to do is be looking in parts of the world, in Southeast Asia, in Europe, uh, and um, in, uh, in uh, the UK, of how we're maximising some of the new agreements that have been put in place. But there is some unfinished business. India, you know, we're very clear on our desire there, as Australia and others are starting to do deals of um, you know, different scales, but all of them give better access to the Indian market than New Zealanders have. We just can't be left behind. We've got unfinished business to do in South America and there'll be other parts of the world, but we're gonna be very, very focused on this. Uh, the resource within MFAT is exceptional, but they can't do everything. And actually what I ask the New Zealand public and you as a business community to do is judge us upon the success and actually how we open doors and how much more we trade, not just on the number of meetings that we have around the world. It is very, very pleasing to see that the trade with the US has grown so much, and it doesn't surprise me. I had an opportunity to uh, get up there uh, in, uh, before the election when we went out of government six years ago, and the potential is quite significant. One of the conversations that we had there when I was up uh, uh, in the White House was about how we can work together, the US and New Zealand, to ensure uh, those around the world who have obligations to our exporters meet those obligations. And I won't talk about things in confidence, but there's a couple of countries in the world as a result of that early conversation six years ago now are uh, being called to task about some of their regimes, particularly around dairy and other agricultural exports. You know, we can be very, very good friends and not agree on everything. Uh, you know, trade has not always been politically as acceptable as New Zealand is today, but fundamentally, deep down, uh, a rules-based approach is the very best way we raise incomes for our citizens when it is fair and is balanced to both sides. A and Ambassador, there will be other opportunities for us to look around the world and work together as friends uh, with other friends to ensure that they meet their obligations to your country and the exporters of mine. I was going to Todd um, Gorillion and IPEF and CPTPP and all the other ones. I'm not going to do that. I, 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 two uh, final areas, though. We talk, you've talked free trade. We've talked about what's left. Um, uh, the point, actually, again, Vangelis and you, you, you make is that uh, it's all very well to have that FTA with Europe. Uh, with Britain, but you've got to get over there and um, hustle it and make the most of it. And that comes to those trade missions you've mentioned. It's fantastic to hear you on that. Um, I'm aware, I, I think I'm right to say, you're going to India in the next fortnight or so. What's, what's next after that? Well, uh, Peter Crisper and NCT Easy, they do a really good job. And so uh, I've sort of talked to them briefly and just in front of everybody, I'm about to ask them to come up with a list very, very quickly of the next countries we should be visiting. If we're to achieve that uh, uh, desire of more trade missions than in the history of any government before, we've got to start now. We can't sort of do it all in the last year just before an election. So, yes, I am committed to going to India um, 
um, uh, you know, before the end of the year because it's a public commitment we made and it's very important to, to honour those. But we've got to actually work with the business community about where those opportunities are. You know, early thinking is we will be looking at countries to go and visit and there'll be large emissions with the Prime Minister or me as uh, Trade Minister with uh, Winston Peters as the Deputy Prime Minister. There will be regional visits we'll do. There'll be sectorial things that will make sense. One of the reasons I was so pleased to have the forestry uh, portfolio as a separate portfolio is the significant contribution forestry can make not only to the New Zealand economy through adding value to wood to export but also meeting our climate change and carbon reduction obligations. I can see a great emission with just the forestry sector to parts of the world. But what I want to measure the success on these missions on is not the number that we do, we'll achieve that commitment of doing more than anybody else, and not on the number of leads that are generated as a result of that. I want the success to be the same as you when you go to a market. If you're using your shareholders' money to visit overseas, success is coming back with those deals. So it's not the trade deal, it's the individual deals that make your companies grow larger, employing more people. But um, so on a pretty long list, it'll be through Southeast Asia, certainly India. Uh, there's going to be some in uh, South America. I think we need the approach to North America and the US as much as everywhere in Washington on a state-by-state -state basis, because every single state is bigger than New Zealand, and each one has the same potential as many others. And, and by the way, a lot of trade missions to Australia. We shouldn't take that... Uh, um, relations for granted just because it's always been there and there's virtually borderless trade. Uh, we should be putting as much effort in there as we are here because, you know, when small New Zealand businesses are supported to market and they succeed, they become medium-sized businesses and when our medium-sized businesses are supported to market, they become large businesses and we need a, need a heck of a lot more large businesses. In is, New the, Zealand. Um, is the 757 up for the task? Or? The, um, so one of the first things I've been asked to do as trade minister is to try and sell it. <laughs> so, so Miles just put his head down. <laughs> um, somewhat flippantly, but somewhat seriously, what's it like being the National Party Winston Whisperer? Well, no, it's, that's, um, that's very, very flattering. But so far over this week, he's given me so much advice and support, and it's going to be a pleasure to work together. So uh, I actually, I quite, feel quite privileged to be also uh, Associate Minister of Foreign Affairs, and that's for no other reason then the, the foreign minister gets to open doors internationally that trade ministers you know, wish they were able to. And it also means that when I go into different countries to talk about trade, actually it's not just about trade. And so for the, um, the representatives of countries, the diplomatic corps in the room, when we visit, it, we talk about a multiple uh, uh, you know, range of things, uh, both you know, through diplomacy, foreign affairs, but whenever New Zealand comes calling, you actually always know it's about trade too. Yeah, I mean, in truth, uh, foreign affairs and trade now must work more closely together than has ever been the case. Yeah, yeah very important. And so I think that you will see, as well as uh, the many things we have to do in New Zealand, because as uh, Prime Minister Luxon has said, we have a real turnaround job to do, and we owe it to the New Zealand people to just get on with that as quickly as we can. Uh, you know, both he, uh, Winston Peters, myself, and other colleagues uh, are going to spend as much time overseas as we can. So uh, we only get to do these things and achieve them with you, the business community. And I just want to thank you for coming out and the great numbers you have today. And I'm going to thank you in advance for the many, many things we're going to ask of you over the coming years. We only get to achieve, grow the economy, you know, increase that trade, get the trade deals we need as a result of the input that you put in as well. And so it's no longer going to be ministers and officials going over there and doing it for you or doing it to you. We actually have to find a way to do it together. And when you New Zealand is its best, then actually we achieve much more on the world stage than our relative size and uh, place in the world suggests as possible. Thanks so much, Todd. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honourable Todd McRae. Thank you.